It is now a quarter to seven. When the lockdown began, dental surgeries, along with lots of other businesses, of course, were ordered to close, but urgent dental care hubs were set up to ensure that people who needed urgent care could still get it. The British Dental Association says that dentists who are working in those hubs, just like medical staff elsewhere, are not getting the protective equipment they believe they need. Dan Johnson reports. Sorry, I know it's a horrible sound. But it's not being heard as much at the moment because so many dentists are off work. In Brig House in West Yorkshire, Dr Mike Earlish is at the surgery, but he's not doing much. Got all the equipment to treat people who are willing to do so, all I'm allowed to do is give prescriptions out because with no PPE. He hasn't treated a patient for ages. We haven't seen anyone for three weeks because face-to-face -face without the appropriate PPE is not advised not possible. I'm advising people to get temporary filling kits, to take painkillers, and if necessary, we can prescribe antibiotics, but that's all we can do. I can get you to bring your teeth together for a moment. More than half of dentists surveyed in England said shortages of the right protective equipment were keeping them at home. They're especially vulnerable working up close in patients' faces. Mike's ordered some visors from a school technology department, but he can't get hold of the right masks. There aren't enough in the country. I understand that, and it's they need to go to the A&E and the hospitals, obviously. But we can't do anything without them because using the dental drill creates an aerosol spray which can spread the virus particles. And without these masks, and it's not just a case of getting the masks, they need to be professionally fitted as well. But I didn't realise quite how hard it would be to take out a molar tooth. So some patients are resorting to DIY, even taking out their own teeth, like Billy Taylor did when he got an abscess. Phone my dentist. Uh, they said they're closed. They will put me on an emergency waiting list, um, but they're not sure how long it'll take. So I phoned 111. They basically said, unless it's actually stopped me from breathing, that they couldn't do anything. Uh, this wasn't the case, but the pain nevertheless was absolutely excruciating. So I got an ice pack, put it on my face, until I couldn't feel it anymore, and then that's it. We've done the, the final tug. Me and my son just went for it, and it, and it came out. It was quite tricky. I thought maybe 10, 15 minutes, but an hour and a half. It took me. We've heard criticism of NHS England and the Chief Dental Officer, Sarah Hurley. Things seem better organised in the other UK nations, but she says PPE is on its way and a network of more than 200 urgent care centres is now up and running. News to some dentists, though. We have no urgent dental centres in my region. We've applied to be one, we haven't heard. We've applied, all the dentists I know have applied to be redeployed to work on the one-on-one -on -one system, to work in hospitals if necessary. No one's heard anything about that. The urgent dental centres still have not been set up, and that is because they haven't got the PPE. Frustrated, I think is the only word. Frustrated that I can't do what I know I should be able to do. That was Dan Johnson reporting and listening to that is the vice chair of the British Dental Association, Eddie Crouch. That frustration widespread, Mr Crouch? Absolutely, yes. And, and good morning. Um, many of my colleagues that I've been speaking to across the weekend and yesterday are still waiting to be tested for some of this kit. Uh, having the kit there is really frustrating when, you know, we're limited to what we can actually deliver for patients. There are, it's four weeks now since we closed many practices and uh, there is a huge backlog of patients in pain. Dentists want to help them and we need the support to actually deliver that care. Just to be clear, it is like the situation in hospitals, is it? Not that there isn't any PPE, but there's a debate going on about whether it's the right level, the right level of protection for your members. Uh, that, that's correct. I mean, some PPE is um, acceptable for doing non-aerosol procedures, but that limits what the, uh, the dentist could do for his patient. Many of our techniques and our treatments involve aerosol, and that really involves wearing the proper respirator-type masks and gowns. We know that that is a real problem across the health service. We know dentistry is fairly low priority in comparison to saving lives, um, but we do want to help patients. And, you know, it's ridiculous that patients are taking their own teeth out in, in, a, uh, in, in a country. Would it be wrong, though, if there is a limit in supply, 
to put dentists below NHS workers, because, I mean, other NHS workers, because some people might say it's a terrible choice to have to make, but it's probably the right choice to make. Uh, Yes, I I, I understand that argument. But, I mean, really what we're hoping to do is provide some real care for people who have been suffering with with toothache and worse, uh, you know, some of these infections could potentially become life-threatening if we as dentists don't have the kit to actually deliver the care. It's going to put other pressures on the health service across uh, A&E and various other services if we can't get primary care up and running. We heard in that report there the suggestion that England is struggling in a way that other countries in the UK are not. Is that simply because there are more cases of coronavirus in the big cities in England or is there something about the way it's being organised that is different? No, I mean, many of uh, the uh, the countries, Northern Ireland and Scotland and Wales, have been delivering urgent dental care centres for much, much longer than we have uh, in England. And the real problem is the sort of organisation within NHS England. The command structure that's there means that things are done far, far slower. Uh, and it means that we've had to wait in England a lot longer for policy uh, and distribution and in, in the other countries, it seems to have been much slicker and, and patients are being seen there. Fascinating to use that phrase, command structure, because there have been complaints, um, not least from the former Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt, that Public Health England, the centralisation of decision making, slows everything up. It, is that what you're suggesting? I am, yes. I mean, uh, two weeks ago, the chief dental officer spoke to the profession in a webinar uh, promising uh, operating procedures and letters to dentists instructing them on uh, urgent dental care centres. And it took over two weeks for that letter to come out. And that's just unacceptable when patients are waiting for treatment. And talking to patients, finally, what's your advice to someone who is, you know, not just got a sore tooth and can take, you know, paracetamol or aspirin or whatever, but someone who's really, really suffering at the moment, what should they do? Well, in the worst case scenario, if they've got swelling that's affecting their airway or their eyes, they should go along to A&E. But in the first instance, if, if they're not that severe, they should phone the local dental practice where the dentist will give them some advice, some analgesics or some antibiotics. If that doesn't work, then that dentist can then refer on to an urgent dental care centre when they're operating. And I imagine the crucial advice is don't do nothing, don't simply suffer in silence. Absolutely not, no. I mean, as I say, some dental infections can be potentially life-threatening. We know people are keeping away from hospitals, but if you've got something that that's severe, you ought to be turning up at an A&E. Eddie Crouch, Vice-Chair of the British Dental Association, thanks for joining.